kiddos. Uh, welcome back to Children's Church through the computer. I wanted to pray um, at the beginning right here from a book that's in the Old Testament, and it's the book of Psalms. And uh, it's connected to the law of God, which we've been talking about with the Ten Commandments. So I'm going to pray for you using uh, Psalm 119, verses 1 and 2. Dear Lord, I pray that um, I pray that these children would come to trust in you, Lord, with all their hearts, mind, soul, and strength, and they, they would love you, Lord. I pray that they would walk in a right way, Lord, in a way that's blameless, Lord, that they can receive your blessing from doing that, from walking in your ways, Lord. I pray that they would observe and do what you tell them to do in your word, Lord God, and that they would seek you, God, with all of their hearts. And I pray that you would just work in their hearts and bring them to yourself, Lord God, and help them to want to obey you, Lord. I pray this in your name, that they may experience blessing from you. Amen. All right, uh, the next thing I wanted to do was I will use the pictures this time. I didn't last time. But let's see if you can remember the first five books of the Bible. We'll do it one time. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and then we're back to Genesis. All right, good. Those were all authored by Moses with words from God. Now I'm going to do a little the finger play like I did last time, and I'm just going to do it one time. So you don't need to say it after me. If you remember it, and maybe you just watched it in video, you can say it with me, or you can just listen to me and think about the story that we're in. Um, first, I'll show you a picture. Do you remember Moses went up to the mountain? This is one artist's uh, drawing of this. He was up on the mountain and God had the lightning and the smoke and people had to stay away from the mountain. And while he was up on the mountain, you can see him holding the stone. Uh, while he was up on the mountain, God was giving him the Ten Commandments. And later he would come down with these stone tablets with writing from God on them. So that's what we're talking about today. God was ready to make a covenant promise. He began with the Ten Commandments. Commandments 1, 2, 3, and 4 tell us how to love the Lord. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 tell us how to act toward men. Israel stood in fear and awe. But Moses went to hear God's law. All right, let's remember those first six commandments that we've already been learning about. One, you shall have no other gods before me, because God should be number one. Two, you shall not make for yourself any graven image. So don't bow down to anything but God. Three, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Don't use your lips to dishonor God. Four, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Don't neglect the things of God. Keep doing what he tells you to do. Five, honor your father and mother. Six, you shall not kill. Sometimes it says you shall not murder. Good. So now we're on to our next ones today. And to do that, first, before I even uh, read the verse, I'll open up to Exodus, though, because we're in Exodus chapter 20 here, you know, in the beginning of the Old Testament. I will read in, from there in just a minute. First, I want to show you a color sheet that I'm sending your way. 
that helps us understand the first verse, and we're going to talk about it first. Can you see this? So there's a heart shape. There's a number seven here first, and there's a heart shape. And what? who's in the middle of the heart? Oh, it's a... It's a groom and a bride. It's a husband and a wife. And they have eyes for each other. They love each other. And they've gotten married. And they're going to live together as one. Now, you can see all these other people don't quite have faces because um, the idea is they're not really paying attention to all these other people on the outside. They only have eyes for each other. They're really thinking about each other. And um, keep that in mind as we're talking about these ideas. Um, so, you know, now I'm going to remind you, because the, the thing is, that husband and that wife, in that heart, they made a promise to each other. And they have eyes only for each other because they are keeping their promises. And why are they keeping their promises? Because God says if you marry someone, you have to keep that promise. Um, to love them and to only love them um, in that special way that husbands and wives love each other. It's important that they keep their promise because our God is a God of keeping promises. I think you might remember the story of Noah and the ark. There was so much sin in the world that God sent a flood to destroy all the wickedness. Um, but saved no, righteous Noah and his family um, and, you know, two of each animal, each kind of animal. And then he sent a beautiful rainbow as a promise that he would never flood the whole earth again to destroy it, that he would never do that. And you know what? He kept his promise. And, you know, Noah and the animals got to come back out on dry land. And now we are how we are with as many people as we have on earth, and yet we still have not had another flood because God keeps his promises. God, our God, the true God, keeps his promises. And he wants husbands and wives to keep their promise to love each other and each other only. Um, and let me explain that just a little bit more. So first I'm going to read the verse from Exodus. And it is Exodus 20:14. You shall not commit adultery. Let's look at that on here. It says, seven, you shall not commit adultery. Adultery leaves a broken heart. And so now you can see a heart here and, oh, it's terrible because look, it's broken. It's like a piece of paper that ripped. It's actually in the shape of a seven to remind us that seven is you shall not commit adultery. Let's say that. You shall not commit adultery. Because adultery leaves a broken heart. So adultery, if you're wondering what the big word adultery means, I'm guessing everyone is wondering what that means. Adultery is any kind of wrong or improper relationship between a married person and someone who is not married to that person. Um, but this... So this is wrong to, it's it's wrong for them, like, let, like he cannot have a special relationship with these other people. She cannot have a special relationship, not like the kind of relationship they have. It's different. So it would be wrong if they tried to go and have a special relationship with someone else. So... The thing is that um, Jesus even taught that this kind of adultery sin can, um, even if it's not like acted on with actions, like doing it, um, that it could actually happen in somebody's heart, um, inside their heart. Jesus taught that if anyone has wrong thoughts about someone, if they're thinking something wrong, that that person has committed adultery in their heart. Um, but you know what? That is sad if people do that, but the good news is um, for those who love the Lord, they can ask the Lord to help them, and they can be strong in doing this the right way. Let's think about some of the ways that our parents have special relationship with each other because they are keeping this promise. So um, maybe some, of, what are some special ways that your moms and dads show love to each other? I bet you're thinking about it right now. Do you ever see your parents hug each other? Do you ever see your parents kiss each other? 
They, yeah, they do that in a way that shows love just to each other, right? And it's good for parents to do that, but only to do it with each other, not with other people. And um, some other ways that they might show love to each other is by giving each other special time to listen to each other, to tell each other important things that they're thinking, um, to make extra time to spend with that person, maybe to serve them and help them in ways that are really extra kind. And that is a special kind of love. So a love between a mom and a dad is different from all other relationships. It's different than like a, a father and a son or a brother and a sister or a friend and a friend. A husband and a wife is a very special, different kind of relationship, and it's important. Okay, that's the seventh commandment. Now let's talk about the sixth commandment. Let me read that for you. In Exodus 20, verse 15, it's, You shall not steal. Let's look at it on our poster. Eight, you shall not steal. Say that with me. You, you shall, shall not steal. steal. So here we have a criminal, someone who is like a bank robber, and he's got a mask on so people can't tell who he is, and it's in the shape of an eight. Um, so there are different ways you can people can steal. A bank robber is one, though that does not happen very often. There are other kinds of stealing that people do. Um, maybe you've heard what stealing is before. Um, steal. So this eighth commandment, you shall not steal. It's um, it's to protect people's property because from being stolen. Stealing is taking something that belongs to someone else. Um, have you ever stolen anything before? Um, so I said there's different kinds of stealing besides a bank robber. Um, you can think about how would you feel if someone stole your favorite toy? Someone took your favorite toy that belonged to you. Um, in our picture that I'm sending home today, this actually reminds me of when I was a girl because um, this girl is away from a little bit away from her mom so she can't see what she's doing and she sees a yummy candy bar and she's thinking about how she, she would like to eat one. Um, but, you know, she doesn't have money and she's thinking about maybe putting it in her pocket. Now that would be stealing. And I, I remember I did something like that when I was younger. And thankfully, I'm so glad my mom caught me and talked to me about it because I had sin in my heart. I wanted to steal. I wanted that. I was um, greedy because I wanted to eat something that wasn't mine. Um, I wanted, and so that's a problem is greed. And then I was tempted because I coveted. I wanted something that was someone else's. I was selfish. I was only thinking about myself. Um, and that made me want to steal. So stealing shows like that you don't care for other people. Um, and do you know what? Even stealing something like a candy bar, um, stealing someone's favorite toy when you're playing at their house, or stealing maybe money from mom's purse to buy something, or you know, someone robbing a bank, it's all the same in God's eyes. It is sin and it is wrong and it hurts other people. And so that's why we don't do that because we need to care about others. Um, the, the attitude behind stealing is selfish. It's not based on love. And God does not want us to steal because God wants us to show others love. So now I'm going to read two final verses and then we're going to just pray. Um, I'm now going to move from the Old Testament to the New Testament. That's later in the Bible. And I'm going to read from Philippians 4.19. It says, And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches um, in glory in Christ Jesus. So if we need anything, all we need to do is ask for, for Jesus to help us. And we can talk with our parents if we need something too. Or even if we want something. But we ought never to steal, right? Um because God can supply our needs and give to us. The last thing I wanted to read was Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28. He who steals, now I'm reading this um, 
because it's good to think about whether you've stolen or not because this is what we must do. So he who steals must steal no longer, so stop it, but rather he must work and perform with his own hands what is good so that he will have something to share with the one who has need. So instead of having an attitude of wanting other people's things, we should work hard and we should be generous and help others and love others and give to others. So that is an important attitude to have. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord, that you would help us to understand about loving other people, that we would understand that moms and dads have a special love for each other and have only eyes for each other because um, it's important to keep promises like you do. And help us to also understand that it's important to not be tempted to want somebody else's things because it will hurt them and we want to show them love. So instead, help us to work hard and also use our words to try to solve um, problems. And also, Lord, that we would be generous and give to others to show them love. And I pray that you'd work in the kids' hearts this week and in their families and bless them, Lord. I pray these things all in your name. Amen.